What's going on guys, it's Snoo603 from Shoosie Bang, and today I'm bringing you episode 7 of Snoo on PC, and we are going to talk about my key bindings and my mouse setup. So if you've read through the comments on this video series, you've noticed that one of the things that has been requested very often is my key bindings, because I tend to bounce between playing on my keyboard, which is a Corsair K90, and the Razer Nostromo, which is basically like a small handheld size miniature keyboard or keypad intended for your left hand only. First off, I'm going to cover my keyboard, which I use a Corsair Vengeance K90 mechanical keyboard. In the video description below, there's going to be a link that will take you directly to Corsair's website where you can read up on all the technical specs on this keyboard. But I'm just going to give you a quick recap of what this keyboard has to offer. First off, again, it's a mechanical keyboard, so the keys are ultra responsive, meaning that you can basically strike the buttons in rapid succession without the keyboard missing anything on what you're typing. It doesn't seem like much, but it is if you're big into PC gaming, or actually if you just happen to type a lot and you type very fast. For me, that's actually very important. To give you an example, you ever type so fast that when you're trying to type a word with two of the same letters back to back, maybe like pessimistic, it only picks up on the first S, but then it picks up on all the other keys afterwards? That won't happen on a mechanical keyboard. It's very responsive, so you can double or even triple tap keys very fast, and it won't miss that input, so it's very accurate. As far as visuals go, it's just black on the outside edges, but it's brushed aluminum behind the keys, so it gives it a very cool look in my opinion. And the keys are backlit with blue LEDs, and there's a button on the keyboard to switch between three brightness settings or to turn the backlighting off. It does also have a volume control on the keyboard and an additional USB port on it as well, so if you want to, you can plug your mouse into the back of it. Lastly, it does have a macro key set on the left side, which I don't use, so I'm not going to go into it. So after that little quick recap, let's get to the key bindings. So I rarely mess with my key bindings for anything other than shooters, and since that's what almost all of you guys are here for, that's what I'm going to cover. I do use WASD for movement like everybody else, I don't change that. I use one for my primary, two for my secondary, and three for my gadget. And I actually use my mouse for my primary and secondary, but I have the keyboard set to that as well for some odd reason, but I'll get to my mouse later. So moving on to the more common and often used keys. I use R for reload, E for enter and exiting vehicles, F for melee or to knifing people, C is for crouch, X I use for prone, Q I use for deploying my bipod if I'm using one or to mark people, Tab I use for checking my score, left shift is for sprinting and I hold it for shift, I don't like click once for shift, I know you can kind of change around a little bit inside of the key bindings on Battlefield 3. And space I use for jump and deploy parachute. Now I know some people have those last two keys switched. Some people have left shift for jump and then space for sprint. And it's really all in your personal preference. But for me, I prefer to use left shift for sprint because I don't have the flexibility slash fast response or better dexterity in my pinky like I do in my thumb. So it's just easier for me to shift my pinky over to that left shift and hold it and keep my thumb to slap the space whenever I need it for jumping and whatnot. Now that's pretty much it. Pretty basic and straightforward with only minor changes from what BF3's default key bindings are. Now, onto my Razer Nostromo, which is a little bit different. Well, let me tell you a bit about it before I go over my key bindings. The Nostromo isn't really a keyboard, it's considered a gaming keypad, which is a difference, but to me, we're just splitting hairs. Let's just call it a mini keyboard. It's a small, ergonomically shaped, single hand use keypad that features 16 programmable keys, a scrolling wheel, and an 8 way directional thumb pad, which basically looks the same as the D pad on an Xbox controller. It does not utilize a mechanical keyboard, but I find the keys to be very responsive anyway and haven't had any issues with successive quick strikes on the same key. The keys are also backlit with blue lighting, and the palm rest is adjustable between two positions, a low and a high. I have bigger hands and I have it set in the lower setting and it just feels more comfortable for me there. To adjust it, you just lift straight up on the palm rest until it snaps out of place and then move it to either the high or low position and then firmly seat it again. Simple as that. Now, as you can see in the image I have displayed on the screen, there are three rows of keys for the Nostromo. Top row is 1 through 5, that's going from left to right. Mid row is 6 through 10. Bottom row is 11 through 14. And then key 15 is your thumb button. Now I use 3, 7, 8, and 9 for my movement keys, as they're in the center of the keypad, and you can see they have arrows on them anyway, so it just makes sense to use them for those arrow keys. They want you to use them because they are centrally located. Going through them 1 through 15, I use oh, minus 3, 7, 8, 9 because I already covered those. 1 is for my scoreboard, 2 is for spotting, 4 is for entering and exiting vehicles, 5 is reloading, 6 is for deploying my bipod, 10 is for melee or using my knife, 11 is for sprint, 12 is for my gadget 3, 13 is prone, 14 is crouch, and 15 is jump and parachute. Now that button you see above the D-pad, I use that for my grenade. 
Really, it's a very simple setup. There's nothing crazy to it, and I basically have it set up the same exact way that I have my keyboard set up. I do prefer to use my Nostromo when playing shooters because I don't tend to screw up like I do when using a normal keyboard because I don't hit the wrong keys. There's only so many keys on the Nostromo, whereas on the keyboard you have the full array of keys to hit, and I tend to hit the wrong one a little too often even still at this point. Therefore, I prefer the Nostromo because it keeps things very simple. So last but not least, I'm going to cover my mouse. I'm currently using the Corsair Vengeance M60 mouse, which I don't believe is still available. They have the next gen, the M65, which as far as I can tell, the same exact thing. It's a very nice mouse, but it's not an over-the-top thing. It's right in that like mid-range of you're spending you know, really cheap to get your bare-bones basic mouse and something really expensive with a ton of buttons. See, the important things worth knowing about it for this video is that it has buttons to adjust the DPI or sensitivity right on the mouse, which is a nice feature when you play in vehicles a lot on BF3. It has three buttons, two of which are bindable, and the other is Corsair's sniping button. Now, when you click and hold the sniping button, it drops your DPI or sensitivity down to a preset percentage of what you currently have it set at. So you get much slower, more precise movement with your cursor, making it great for things like sniping, hence the name. I actually use it for when I'm in the gunner seat of a chopper or a tank, so I don't have to mess with my DPI settings at all. It actually works out really, really well. For the two thumb buttons, I actually have my primary set to the closest button and my secondary set to the farther button. For my scrolling wheel, I have gadget one set for scroll forward, which would be your med pack if you're playing as an assault, and gadget two for scrolling backward, which would be your defibs if you're playing as assault again. I actually have this backwards compared to most people, but it made more sense for me to have it this way. I tend to need to use my med pack and defibs more often, especially when I was first getting used to playing on PC, and it was easier for me to use a scrolling wheel on the fly when playing. I set the med pack for scrolling forward because I just have it in my head that scrolling forward, you know, he throws the med pack forward, so it's that whole forward motion. I associate the motion, so therefore in my head, it's not so much of remembering what button as what motion to get what I need to do. And I just connected the two motions in my head, and that's how it makes sense to me. And it just makes it easier to remember what does what as I was learning to play on PC in the early stages. I probably just repeat myself, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. It's little things like that that really made it easier for me to make the transition to mouse and keyboard. So that obviously only leaves scrolling backwards for defib, so that's where I set that. I don't use my secondary as often as I probably should, so that's why I have my primary set to the closest, easiest to reach thumb button. So the farther one I have obviously set for my secondary. Last but not least, just like everyone else, I do use left mouse button for shooting and the right mouse button for aiming. So all in all, that's it. That's my key bindings and setup in a nutshell. I hope you guys were able to follow along. I do plan on doing a complete review individually for all three things that I talked about in today's video very, very soon. So if there's something specific you really want me to cover in those reviews, let me know here and I'll be sure to include it when I do those reviews. As of now, I don't have anything planned for the next episode of Snoove on PC, but if there's something you'd like me for me to cover in the next episode, please leave a comment with a suggestion. I am always open for you guys to leave suggestions, so let's start hearing them. If you guys did enjoy the video, I would really appreciate it if you could like it and share it, please. It does help us grow, and we're always happy to see that. Last but not least, if you're on Twitter, be sure to follow me over there. It's at Snoof603, and seriously, guys, don't be shy. Feel free to tweet at me at any time with questions or just to shoot the shit. I'm very friendly and respond to everyone. That's what it's there for. That's going to wrap it up. I hope this was helpful. I'll catch you guys later.